I'm lightning speed on that thing. Eight o'clock to go. Well, it depends on how quick Linda is. As soon as we get out of here. <laughs> Both of us. consisting of February 26, 2020 through March 10, 2020, payroll EFTs in the amount of $29,043.55, claims checks in the uh, 28940 through 28983 in the amount of $40,013.96 for a grand total of $68,057.51. There's no new licenses, uh, liquor or cannabis license applications or renewals. No problem. Second. It's been moved and second. Seconded to approve the consent calendar. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No executive session. Presentations. Ms. Linda McKinney, branch manager of the Tobacco Branch of Timberland Regional Library, will present information to the council on public on, and the public about the 2020 census. Okay, I followed the directions to press here before speaking, so I think you guys can hear me. <laughs> anyway, good evening. I'm uh, happy to be here today to give you a little bit of an overview about um, the 2020 Census and the library's partnership with the Census to help uh, get as high a response rate as we can um, here in Tenino and throughout our five counties. So how do I make it be on the screen? You guys, John has to be here. Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> sorry, John. Sorry, sorry, John. 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 Did that light come on out there? Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's light. Light. Yeah. 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 Slowly appearing. The light's all dim. <laughs> okay. I think you can you see that okay? Okay. I can. All right. So in a way it's good that uh, John and Wayne are not here tonight because they heard this presentation already, so all right. And now it's nice to see it. Um <laughs> Okay, um, so they won't be bored, but I thought that perhaps they could learn something new. Usually can. Alrighty, so why do we have a census? Well, I was interested to learn that the census in the United States was the first one in the world to not be instituted for conscription or tax purposes. It is solely for the purposes, the purpose of apportioning uh, representation in the U.S. House of Representatives. Actually, that was its original sole purpose. It has grown since then. Um, so every 10 years, we have a census. The first one was in 1790, and it was conducted by US Marshals on horseback. And we, as you know, are having the decennial census this year. But uh, no US Marshals are participating in administering the census. And as far as I know, nobody on horseback. But can't be know for sure. Okay. So it is important uh, for the apportionment of representatives. In 2010, we gained enough population to gain one more 
uh, seat in the House of Representatives, unlike many of the states that are listed up there. Um, who knows, we may get one more seat if our population has increased enough in 2020. So the, we get into the territory now, the stuff that I didn't really realize about the census that I actually find pretty interesting, but maybe I'm just kind of a nerd about this kind of stuff. But um, So now the uh, census is used for more than apportioning uh, seats in the U.S. House. Um, it is a way to distribute federal funding uh, according to population uh, in a way that's uh, perceived as fair, uh, which that's not a <laughs> slam against the government. It's about... Uh, about uh, assuming that most people are being counted, and that's not always a, good, a safe assumption. But um, states get more than $674 billion each year and affects many programs, like the number of Head Start seats we have, um, free school lunch programs, transportation and infrastructure funding, and many other things that you can see um, listed up there. I noticed that the person who made this uh, presentation put state, state libraries up there on top. And the Washington State Library does funnel funds to both public and school libraries for things like internet access and technology. In Washington State, we get 29.2% of our budget, almost 30% of our budget from federal funding. Um, so. Another way to look at it is that we get about $1,500 for each person who responds to the census. So if one person does not respond to the census, we're essentially losing $1,500 of our state budget. As I mentioned before, the uses of the census has increased in different areas. Uh, another thing I hadn't realized is that the results of the demographics from the census is used to apportion our state legislative districts. So starting in 2021, the results from this census will begin the redistricting process here in Washington state. Another great use that um, people use the census for is often businesses um, and nonprofits will look at the census data to see if it's worth going into a particular place according to their demographic market. Um, so that is something else I did not know. So what's new in 2020? Well, the big thing is that you can respond online for the first time. You can also call a toll-free number, which is not active yet. <laughs> Tell you about that March 12th, pr pretty soon. Um, or respond to the census by paper. So. Good dates to know, and the reason I'm here tonight is that the day after tomorrow, March 12th, the online portal opens and the 800 numbers will be active. That doesn't mean you have to respond um, online on the 12th, it's just the first day that you can start um, doing that, and in fact, probably the people who are doing the computer stuff for the census probably hopes that not everybody will respond on the 12th and bring the servers down. <laughs> um, Let's see here. So one of the things that the library is doing to partner with the census is that each library has a designated computer for responding um, online to the census. So um, you can also do that on any of our library computers, but there will be one set aside um, just for that. Uh, just in case you're curious, the service-based enumeration is for people who have non-traditional housing or are experiencing homelessness. The enumeration or the ability, opportunity to fill out the census will be at places where they receive service. Um, the group quarters enumeration is for counting people who live in college dormitories, military <laughs> barracks, and prisons. Um, so, March 12th, they will start, the census will start sending out postcards inviting you to respond to the census. And they will also send out uh, paper forms to certain census tracts that have been low responding in the past or that have very low um, internet access rates. And then they will start sending reminders and asking you to respond by online or by phone. Eventually, you will get an, a form in the mail if you've not responded. But if you do respond, that shouldn't happen. <laughs> and um, the reason that they're doing it this way is because the cheapest way for the Census Bureau to get the data is if you do it online. 
Next cheapest is calling, and then the um, form is more expensive, and the most expensive ways if a person needs to come to your door, knock on it, and ask you questions. So, please respond early. If you don't, somebody will come visit <laughs> If you don't, somebody will come and visit you, <laughs> yes. I was talking to a gentleman at the senior lunch last week, and he said that, it, he didn't remember which census it was, but you know, one of the censuses, he did not answer one of the questions because he just thought it wasn't the government's business. And so, um, whatever it was, he couldn't remember what the question was. <laughs> but somebody came knocking on his door <laughs> and wouldn't leave till he answered that question. So the, um, the stuff that they're asking this year, I don't think is uh, anything that people would be too concerned about. And we'll get to that in just a moment. I did want to make sure that everybody knows that if you only receive mail at a PO box and not at a residential address, you will not be getting any invitations to participate in the census, nor will you automatically get a paper form. So if you know somebody who only gets mail at the PO box, that's most <laughs> a lot of people. But if you have a residential, you know, actually I'm not going to say that because I don't know for sure. So it's very important that you help me spread the word that you need to uh, you know, do the online or call and ask for a, either you know, to respond over the phone or ask for one to be sent to your email, to your email, to your PO box. So yes, I do know that that is an issue here in Tenino. I think it's Bucota too. Yeah, I'm sure it is Bucota too. Yeah. I, yeah, many of the more rural areas in um, Thurston and Lewis County, definitely. So what does the census ask? You can see the things that are um, listed here. Um, a lot of people have a question about what is the difference between race and ethnicity? And um, actually, number eight is the ethnicity question, which is, uh, are you Hispanic or Latino? Or are you non-Hispanic, non-Latino? And then race is, what is the race you most closely identify with? Um, like Native American, African American, American, that kind of thing. And you can respond, you can choose more than one race in this census. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of discussion in the media last year about whether or not there'd be a question about if you were a citizen on the census, and the answer is no. There is not a question about whether or not you are a U.S. citizen on this census. What is this whether someone lives elsewhere? I don't understand. So that would be, um, do you have a child who's at college and not living at home kind of thing? Relation to or maybe somebody in the military who's not living at home. And it's interesting, they have different algorithms built into their um, computers. That's actually a, a check and balance question, so that they will see if the person somehow, I don't understand all of this, but it's a check and balance question to make sure that people aren't getting counted twice. We probably have to have a computer, uh, an IT slash statistician here to explain it to us. <laughs> Okay, so we already went over the um, when you're going to get the thing, and just again, if you're not, uh, don't receive mail at your residential address. Please be aware that uh, you will need to respond online or call. It is going to put it in the paper, so everybody goes to the library. Excellent, we're prepared, <laughs> and we can actually uh, print a form off from the computer from the Census Bureau to you, so you can, uh, if you prefer, to respond by paper. So it's no surprise that these days people are concerned about uh, confidentiality of their information. And um, only information in the aggregate is reported. Personally identifying information is not released until 72 years after the census. And by then, I'm not going to care. <laughs> now, if I were five, perhaps I would care. But, you know, I'm not really worried about that. Um, you can see some of the other checks and balances there. Um, but one thing I did want to mention is that um, it's very specific laws about that the Census Bureau cannot release any information to any other organization. This includes law enforcement, immigration enforcement, the FBI, the CIA, an individual who's suing somebody and has a subpoena cannot be released. And the reason that this came about, the law was passed in 1954, is that during World War II, census information was used to identify Japanese Americans to intern them. So the Census Bureau takes the whole privacy thing and not sharing information pretty seriously. 
So, no surprise, most people would think that people experiencing homelessness would be a difficult population to count, and they are, but um, there are other populations who are equally, or perhaps less so, but are being undercounted, and that would be children under the age of five. For some reason, a lot of parents don't think to include them on the census, but very important, <laughs> they are people too, and more importantly, there's so much importance about early education and things like Head Start slots are portion from the census, so we want to make sure that all of our young people are being counted. Um, renters were another er another type of person that I did not think about, but renters often assume that the landlord is going to be reporting them on their census form, and that is not how it works. It is whoever is living in the house or the unit at that time needs to report. Nobody else is going to report for them. Um, so you can see the other um, areas here. Low internet access areas, um, there we actually, are, our census tract is designated as a low internet access area, and there are many others within the Timberland Regional Library five county system, you know, up in Salcom and Mount, uh, Mountain View and out uh, near Westport and all of that kind of thing. So it's really important that um, we get the word out that Yes, you can come to the library, you can use our computer, we can get the uh, 800 number for you, all of that. Um, something I forgot to mention, if you're calling in or responding um, by internet, there you can respond in 59 languages, and the paper is only available in Spanish or English, but 59 uh, languages either online or if you call the phone number. The census is hiring. So you know, if you know of anybody who's looking for a temporary position, they're actually decently paid, and they are looking for people. I know they have not hired everybody that they need. You see the requirements on the screen there. And something that's a nice feature is that the jobs do not count against TANF and other federal benefits programs. So somebody can work um, this uh, job and still receive their benefits. If you know somebody, or perhaps you would like to earn a little bit extra money, uh, these are the places where you can get information um, about uh, where to apply and the applications. So, does anybody have any questions for me? I saw John's hand first. Are they doing a short form and a long form? No, there's just the short form this time. Mm -hmm. They've gone from doing both forms in the decennial census to at points in between the decennial, they will sample the population and send them in the long form and then extrapolate statistically. Do you know how uh, homeless people, if they have no uh, address, how, how, how does that work? Yes, yeah, so that's part of the service point enumeration. I can't remember exactly what they call it. But so um, the service uh, census workers will be at places where people experiencing homeless receive services. So. I don't know exactly what all the offices you know might be available here, but let's say in a tum water like the WIC office or um, uh, at a food bank or um, where they go to fill out you know government forms of any stripe. So there will be people there who will be uh, reaching out to people who are experiencing homeless homelessness. There's also going to be uh, people who are hired to go into uh, camps, you know, in larger population areas. And um, the census really likes to hire people who are local. And um, for the census, for the homeless camps, they often, they try to find people who've lived in the camps or are currently living in the camps because they don't want to set up a situation where people are, you know, suspicious and less inclined to respond. But they can just come to the library. Oh yeah, they can go to the library too. Yeah, so the multiple opportunities. And I think that that's the whole, purpose is to try to, you know, make it as easy as possible to respond and to make sure that everybody knows that it's important to respond and to, uh, you know, make it hard to not respond because you're seeing it everywhere and it's so easy. <laughs> so, yeah. I did the pre-census in 1989 oh, you... before the 1990 census. It was very interesting. Oh, that does sound interesting. It was. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think, going over my mind, if there's anything important that I left out, but you probably feel like I gave you more than enough information. <laughs> so, like I said, you know, if you um, if something occurs to you later, please feel free to reach out, um, and I'll do my best to answer. And if I don't know the answer, I will find it out. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Rachel, you want to get the line?
write for us. Thank you. So I can read what I have to do next. <laughs> Okay, um, the, our other presentation is not here, so maybe they're not going to be here. So we'll take public comments. Anyone has anything they'd like to say? We've um, got three minutes. What? During the work session, but since we didn't have a work session, I thought we would go ahead and we are doing it. I thought we, both, but we, but the, but one of, <clears throat> right now it's supposed to be about what we just talked about and what's on the agenda. agenda. Yeah. The work session can be anything. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, that. yeah. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> well, that's what I was thinking, but nobody's coming up to say anything, so I guess we'll move on to no public hearing. No pro proclamations. Okay. Old business. The city engineer has completed the plan to extend sewer and water lines to the Egg Park properties and requires council approval to be begin the bidding process. He is also developing an amendment to the scope of work to provide for construction management and inspection. Second. It's been moved and seconded to authorize the city engineer to begin the bidding process. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Gibbs and Olson has prepared an amendment to the sco scope of work for the Quarry House renovation to cover construction management and inspection. Move to authorize, uh, recommend, uh, second. It's been moved and seconded to authorize Mayor Frenier to sign the amended scope of work as presented. We don't have any new business. No ordinances and no resolution. What? Oh, oh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to get out of here quick. Yeah, I do. <laughs> no new business, no resolutions, no ordinances, reports, Chamber of Commerce. Next week. Yeah. There's an EDC, Experience Olympia and Beyond. Did everybody get the email that they sent out? Yes. Okay. Uh, that South Thurston Fire and EMS District 12. Uh, we already heard from Linda. Although I do have a quick Okay, Tonino Branch, Timberland Lumber, you're on. So something that's been on everybody's mind lately is the coronavirus. And um, just wanted to update you that um, based on meetings with the health department in Thurston County, um, administration has advised us to remove the children's toys from the children's area for the time being, and hopefully we'll be able to put those back end of March, but that all depends on what's going to happen. Um, and also to ask library managers to, managers to look at the programming and determine whether or not we should cancel them. Now, they're more concerned about large crowds, and here in Tonino we usually get a comfortable, you know, 10 or 15 people at our program, so um, I've decided not to cancel programs at this juncture, um, but people who are in high-risk groups should consider whether or not they're comfortable with coming to an event with, you know, 10 or 15 people. I'm in that group on there. <laughs> but you did renew your library card, so good for you. That's okay, you do that online. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so we're all going on with the, all of our programs um, as usual, and if you're not quite sure what is happening at the library on any given day, I encourage you to check out our Facebook page, um, look at our online calendar, or we have an old-fashioned paper calendar that you can pick up and uh, put on your fridge for the next three months so you know what's happening at the library. Thank you. Okay, Tonino Depot Museum. Okay, Jessica Rush-Reeves, uh, she was able to get a, a grant so that she can get paid for some of the stuff that they're doing. Uh, she's, I made her administrator on the Facebook page. She's, she's going to be posting uh, all different tours and activities for the museum. Uh, right now they're going through the, the cleanup stage and shifting a lot of the exhibits around so it'll, it'll look a little, bit on, a little bit fresher than it has over the last couple of years where it's always been the same stuff. Uh, I don't, I don't know when the start update is. It's usually either this month or April. I think it's right after, right after Easter. So we're getting pretty close to the start update, 
And again, if anybody wants to come down during the week since we're not open, and uh, or any time until we do open on a regular basis again, and that was one of the things that they're trying to do is to make sure that we have some more hours. Uh, just go to hold us on uh, Facebook, uh, Sonoma Depot, you know, the, the Sonoma Depot on Facebook, and give us about two, three days headway. This way, we can know we can have somebody there to give you a tour. I understand that. Um, that when Jessica was up there cleaning out, she had about seven different people came up through and, uh, and she gave them a did. little impromptu tour. So, yeah. yeah. The reason that it, that it happened that way is because of the Evening Magazine mm -hmm. uh, bit that they did on the wooden money. So a lot of people that came down to see what was going on. And she was happen she happened to be there cleaning up, so she showed her around a little That's bit. That's great. And they lost a drawer. Yeah, you know she anybody? lost a drawer. Did she get it back? <laughs> she didn't say anything oh, about it. Well, she was. She put it on Facebook. She okay. said she was cleaning and, and to set one of the a drawer out of something outside, and when she went to get it, it had disappeared. She forgot it, and then it was yeah, gone the next morning. Well, next morning it was gone. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Uh -huh. There's a dead animal in it, so she just stuck it outside and it's clean. <laughs> she, she, mentioned, she mentioned rats and yeah, yeah. mice. She so said all kinds of nice things. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> Arch Commission. I don't have a clue. Uh, Civil Service Commission. Thursday. Okay. Planning Commission, no. Uh, facade Grant. We've uh, okayed a, the grant for um, Lady uh, Tom Polk that bought the mini mall. And he's going to be doing some things to it. So, um, um, one of the things that uh, George Sharp has been doing this is kind of going back, but in, in the same uh, vein here uh, is first Fridays. Mm -hmm. So if you can't make it to the normal chamber meeting, they have all kinds of training on the first Friday of every month at uh, eight o'clock in the morning. Seven thirty. Seven thirty. Maybe that's why I was almost late. In, in any event. Uh, this, they were bringing up all these different kinds of things and what to do with this and that and that. And I reminded them about this grant that the city has and it was almost like a light bulb just just went on. Oh, you do that? Yes. Who, who, you reminded who? Everybody in the room. There's about 15 oh. people. Oh. Okay, well that's good. Glad to hear it. Finance committee, we didn't meet Saturday because John, John was sick. sick. We were scheduled. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Public Safety Committee, Chief of Police. <coughs> Does Lynn supposed to present that to you? Uh, no. Okay. I, I, I'm actually going to present it to you all. Oh. oh. Um, so, uh, but thanks for ruining my my thing. <laughs> uh, of so anyway, uh, good evening, Mayor Pro Tem and the City Council. Uh, Robert Swain, your Chief of Police. Um, today was a, a kind of a, a very banner day for the City of Tenayo in that uh, the Department of Corrections has had a room in our station. Since about uh, or or in the Tenino area since 1994, which I wasn't aware of, <laughs> uh, but it was uh, Chief Stansberry that started uh, this program, and it was continued all the way up uh, now through me. Uh, so what we did today is we were recognized uh, for our partnership with the Department of Corrections. And they presented us with this very nice plaque. How neat is that? So, I love it. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. You can be in the paper. Yeah, you want to stand up? Yeah. Can I have one? Okay. Let's see. 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 What the Department of Corrections has been doing is uh, every other Tuesday they have clients, uh, low uh, risk level clients that come to Tenino Police Department and check in with their parole officers. And we've given them a, an office in, uh, to do that. And uh, this year I put in some additional safety measures because they come beyond the interior door there. So. Uh, they now wand their clients and actually physically pat them down 
before they come back uh, to where we have access in that. So um, they've been very cooperative with uh, the changes that we want to make, and uh, we're we're proud to receive that award. And yes. um, our partnership is very important with them. Uh, the other thing is is uh, Parole really assists us in some of our investigations uh, because they have the ability to, if we give them a name, they have the ability to go check on this person for us. And um, if they find something while they're there in the house, then they call us back and say, hey, we found this, this, and this, if you want to come down and check it out. So That's good. We're, we're happy to work with them. They know a guy. Yeah, yeah. They <laughs> know a guy who knows a guy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, uh, your old chief here went to command school last week in Walla Walla, Washington. Yeah, Don't fun know place. if you've ever been to Walla yeah, Walla, yeah. but I spent my first honeymoon there. Uh, well, overnight. so uh, yeah, so you know, if you like wine, it was fun. It's a great place to be. If you like onions. It's a great place to be, and if you don't want to go to prison, uh, stay away from Walla Walla, because that's what's there, it's a big prison. Um, uh, met, met a lot of chiefs throughout uh, Washington, um, and it was, if, if nothing else, it was it was good to, to meet some of the other chiefs and sheriffs in, in the state. So uh, it, was, it was beneficial to go, and, and so now I have completed the requirements to be actually turned a chief of police in the state of Washington. Well, it's I, about time. Well, I know. It, 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 <laughs> I, I, take this, yeah, it's taken so long. So, um, so now I'm I'm all uh, legal and certified and pretty scary, whatever <laughs> that means. Um, Officer Sam Garcia, two weeks ago, or whenever it was that was reading day. She went and read to like 10 different classes cool. uh, throughout the, the elementary and, and um, Park, Park side. Park side. Yeah. And so I just want to acknowledge that she really stepped up and, and did that. Oh, I bet they loved it. Yeah, uh, uh, my understanding is she was received uh, quite well. So. Yeah, that's great. Um, as far as uh, some of the, the criminal stuff that's been going on around the city, uh, we haven't had much, which is a good thing. Uh, we continue to concentrate on a couple of areas in the city, uh, not the least of which is uh, Houston Street. We're still uh, experiencing some issues there that we're addressing, and then a couple of other areas that we've identified in the city that need our attention. And so we're, we're, we're moving ahead with that. Um, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else uh, of real importance. Uh, Saturday. This Saturday, I will be having my second come meet with the Chief Coffee uh, since I've been here. It'll be at the Western Co uh, Coffee House. And uh, Marie has me uh, as a guest barista. Oh, which oh is, fun. <laughs> which is going to be pretty scary. Actually. What time are you going to be there? 11 o'clock. Okay. Oh, it's, going to go yeah, from, yeah. it's going to go from 11 to 2. And I'm just going to, uh, you know, have some conversation about some of the things that we're doing in the police department that we've done over the last year that I've been here. And also uh, answer some questions that people may have. Where will that be? Uh, at the coffee house, right. Western Coffee. Yeah. Your neighbor. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I'm excited to, to, to do that and my plan is to have uh, one or two of those a year uh, for as long as you guys have me. So um, my hope is, is uh, that uh, people will come and give me an opportunity to just, you know, mm -hmm. meet with them. So. Do you get good at that barista stuff? This way the splash bash can auction you off. That, that's a very <laughs> yeah. good idea. I yeah. know, a very good idea. Uh, I've been auctioned off and I'm not very... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very expensive. Well, you're going to be again, yeah. sir. Yeah. I'm very sorry. But yes. You are going to be. Okay. Um, so, uh, uh, everybody's doing good uh, as far as the department goes. We have one reserve opening. The Reserve Academy that we wanted to hold starting next month, we're going to have to push back till June. We just haven't had the mm. people uh, 
sign up like we would. However, we have had quite a few sign up for our already for our uh, second uh, Citizens Academy that we're going to hold starting in May. I never seem to be able to so, make it. Well, uh, one of these times that we do it, you can you'll you'll make it. Um, we uh, uh, one of the things that we're going to do this time around is that we did do last time uh, with the, the Citizens Academy is. We are going to try to get them uh, all through the simulator for firearms and um, uh, get that machine back. Uh, Jonathan Meyer with Lewis County, he's one of our reserves, as you know, and his uh, department uh, purchased one of those. So we have an end there to, to get that done. Other than that, I'm, I'm open for any questions that you might have, Council. National Night Out. Uh, National Night Out is moving along quite, uh, quite rapidly. Um, I'm not sure that uh, have they have, did they move the date on that, or is it still the same date? From what I understand, it's August fourth, Tuesday evening. Okay, I thought I read something. I'll, I'll check something on that. Too. Yeah, uh, I'll I'll check on that and I'll get with you. But yeah, uh, our hope is is that. Uh, our national night out will be something that the community will really wrap themselves around and, and help honor the first responders in the area. So. Hey Chief, um, yes. where are we with the animal services contract? Oh, yeah. good question. Uh, so, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, uh, officers stopped a car, ended up arresting the driver, and inside the car was a vicious dog wouldn't let the officers near it to save its life. And so uh, we were having to tow the vehicle, impound it, because we can't leave it there. And um, we spent an extra hour, hour and a half maybe, trying to find someone to come get this dog, and we finally were. But it brought, again, another example forward on how, uh, you know, how much we need to have something in in line with animal services. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I'm asking for council to um, uh, have, you know, John draw something up or, or whatever we need to do to contact them and say, you know, we're either going to do a contract with you or we'll do the a la carte thing uh, where we'll pay their fees up front, whatever. To come do that, but had we have not had we have not uh, found someone to come get that dog, we would have been stuck. Well, they still wouldn't come and get that dog, from what she said. They, if it's a vicious dog, they'll, they'll come get it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because she said that we that if it's if it's not a vicious just dog, a stray, it's just, then it's you just have to yeah. gather it and then they come. Yes, but this dog, <laughs> uh, from what I understand. Um, uh, this dog was very close to being expired, uh, so I, you know, I don't want that to happen. No. And um, you know me, I'm an animal lover, so <coughs> so that's where we're at. I'm I'm waiting for some guidance on on how we want to proceed. Okay. Thanks. Anything else? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. City planner, no. Public works, no report. City attorney, clerk treasurer, mayor, be that. Uh, there's no report. Okay. Uh, CIP. CIP, uh, just to go back a little ways, that uh, stands for Community Investment Partnership, and it used to be the cities and the county and the uh, United Way. We're all kind of work together and pool resources. The United Way is pulled out of the of that process, so now it's been renamed to the Health and Human Services Council. So now it's the HHSC instead of the CIP. But we did meet uh, just a couple of days ago, and uh, the one thing that's going to probably maybe come to us is they're looking at combining the Reg regional housing council and this HHSC group, uh, and so they're working on creating some bylaws around that and how those two groups are going to work together since they're related. 
So they're probably going to be bringing that to the city to review uh, and make comment on. So that's something we're going to probably see coming up. The other big thing that's coming up this next month, I believe, is RFPs for the monies that we disperse. So I think we have uh, close to $300,000 to give out to organizations that help homelessness and people in need, housing, emergency housing needs, and some of those kind of things. So if you're aware of any organizations that... Uh, profit, uh, you need? Uh, yeah, you love. Yeah, they're and like the food bank, uh, we gave quite a bit of money to Roof, Roof in mm -hmm. Rochester last year, I think, like $14,000. Whole households, that so, a thing like that. Choose, but Choose Love, I don't think, has ever gotten anything from them, and they do. Mm -hmm. And they do, um, they help with what, like utilities, and they help kids when they need clothing and things. It's a good organization. Yeah. So if you know, if the, I don't know how they get the word out, but well, there should be some okay, release, we'll release, but just let them know. They can go to okay. the county website. Okay. I think it's on there. Uh, okay. it gives, it's an online application, so okay, I don't I'll give, I'll get, get a hold of Stacy and tell her. Uh, yeah, because any we there's very few organizations in this area that have applied. You know, like I said, Roof and, and Rochester got a significant amount of money, but... Uh, we might as well try it. If there's organizations sure. that can use it, sure. it doesn't hurt giving it a try. Uh, that's about it for that one. Solid waste advisory board. Uh, nothing much. Our last meeting that went over some bylaw changes, but our big thing is to finish this. Uh, I think I talked about it at the last meeting. Uh, the uh, update of the solid waste plan mm -hmm. because of the changes in the recycling. It needs a major update, so we're going to do a day long retreat to try to just knock it out in one day and get that updated so it makes sense to what's happening in the current situation. Okay, TCOM. Tonight, school board. I have some on TCOM. Oh, okay. Um, so, again, I come to you to ask you to uh, do a resolution. Uh, so that I can uh, take it, or somebody can take it to the both boards of TCOM so we can get our seat. And um, uh, another example of why we need it, so uh, the last one I went to, the operations meeting, they decided that there is now going to be, I don't know when they're going to put it in place, but they voted to have a non-police uh, emergency, a non-emergency phone number which they've always had one, but everybody in Thurston knows that if you call 911, you're going to get through to this That's what it's designed for. Yeah, and so, uh, they're, uh, you know, I don't think we need it uh, as your chief. I don't think, I think picking up the phone down 911 is as easy as anything. Right. Uh, but apparently they're getting overrun with some uh, calls that uh, are taking the place of emergency calls that are coming in. So. Uh, I, it would have been nice to be part of that discussion, but because I'm sitting out in the crowd, I, d I don't, I don't get to exactly. talk. So I didn't, so. we didn't make a, a, there was no motion made to do a resolution for this. I, I thought, thought there, there was. was. I thought there was too. Yeah. We'll have to look just, into that. Yeah, yeah, we'll just I look just, into it I just, because I thought that there was. I just give that to you uh, so that okay. we can get something okay. done. All right, thanks. School board. So last Saturday they had the auction, which was a packed house. There was every every ticket was sold out, and so um, a lot of families came and supported. And they're still kind of doing the numbers and stuff, but they made close to thirty-eight thousand. Oh my God, that's wonderful! <laughs> which they will divide up between all four schools. Oh, that's fabulous! So each school will probably get roughly eleven to twelve thousand. I'm going to yeah. register as a school that gets into that. <laughs> right. Well, and also, so Belmonte is pretty excited because with the levy passing and stuff, there's yeah. going to be a lot of things that yeah. he's going to be able to work with and play with. And uh, I know the, uh, the wiring is a big concern. Yeah. At the middle school, I don't know if you hear, but some hot wires oh, happened. Oh, I did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My daughter was like, the school's on fire. I'm like, what? But it wasn't. It was just for Ethan was gone. He yeah. was at some ASB thing, so I <laughs> found out through email. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just got a little warm. <laughs> Wires were crossed, I don't know. But yeah, so hopefully that's in the agenda, because the high school as well needs yeah. some yeah. work good, good updates. Mm -hmm. Okay, TR 
PC. TRPC 89 mess, but there was really nothing. That's nothing in there. In that meeting. It's all just basic legislative updates. It's all about most of what we got. And uh, some of the I 5 corridor studies they're working on uh, uh, Maytown to Fort Lewis, I think, is the they're trying to figure out how to. So from Marysville all the way down. Oh, well, yeah, but I think the one they referenced was like a Maytown to Fort Lewis one. So. They're trying to figure out how to deal with that traffic through, still through uh, Fort Lewis. Because what I understand when they fix the Fort Lewis thing, it's just going to back the traffic up farther. Sure. It's not going to fix the problem. It's just going to make this big traffic slow down. So, yeah. so it'll be better right around Fort Lewis, but you'll get slowdowns in, in Olympia instead of in, you know, at the Nisqually <laughs> Bridge. So, uh, yeah. So the problem is, uh, I think it's a waste of money because they know they can't do anything of the Nusqually Bridge yeah, that dump yeah, there, it's, it's so thing. sensitive, yeah. they can't touch it. What's already there is there, and that's about it. So, but every yeah. few years, they keep, oh, well, we got to study. Mm -hmm. <laughs> steady. 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 That's steady. steady. That's uh, what, not, not this, steady. not next Friday, but the following. You're right, and I'll be able to go to that one. Thank goodness, it's about time. Transportation Policy Board. That's tomorrow. The, everything else is just like what he was saying. Uh, discuss this, discuss that, legislative updates, but there is one thing that we have to approve. There is extra money allocated to inner city transit, so we've got to say yes, so they can move up, and then they can say yes, and then inner city transit will get the money. Okay. But it's tomorrow morning. Okay. Public comments number two. Did anybody want to say anything? Okay. Um, I am attending the BVAT meetings, um, so the library can partner with, with them. And um, I just wanted to mention that they are having an event coming up on April 1st at the high school. They're screening um, the movie Screenagers 2. Screenagers, the original one, was all about um, digital devices and how they were impact how they impact um, kids, uh, not only social interactions, but um, their brain development. Uh, and from what I understand, Screenagers 2 focuses more on uh, mental health and uh, wellness around that. So that's free. The movie is at 6.30. From 6 to 6.30, there'll be um, quite a few groups um, that uh, uh, are resources for mental health. Um, and the library will be there just to you know share what we can offer. Um, so April 1st, uh, 6.30 for the movie, 6 o'clock for resource fair at the... High school. Okay, thank you. They, have they not put something on Facebook? Because I'm always reposting their stuff and I haven't seen anything about this one. I will ask them. Well, although I think the BNAP meeting, actually, I think it's the 20th this month, usually it's the last mm -hmm. Monday of the month, but I will ask them about that. Okay. Any announcements? I guess we just had one announcement, so I don't have anything. Does anybody else? I wanted to let you guys all be aware that um, the public works guys didn't like Jen and I this last time. Troy was out of town and we made him reread a bunch of meters and looked at a bunch of meters and they found quite a few that are uh, not working. So we need to get those done and get money guessing. to get these units purchased and get them done. I thought we didn't approve that money, but I think he's know. got it. He's just this hasn't got it done yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay. He was. Yeah. Okay. I don't really know all the good stuff now. Well, you're he just you're, you're, you're just. <laughs> <laughs> and the city did get a bill today, and I I blame the new girl. Thirty-four thousand dollars for the city. <laughs> for what? The water. water? <laughs> <laughs> Really? Yeah. <laughs> we are not going to let you have it. Oh, late fees. You guys yeah. are gonna, you're going to be without water. <laughs> yeah. Oh, maybe adjourn. Not debatable. Good. And you? Duke's good. Badge is good. Not bad. Uh, good. 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 Bad. Good. 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 I think that would be right. Yes. Oh, you want it out? Yes. Yep. Oh, great. Not yeah. surrender your power, so we can do it. Last month. Let me tell you. Block. Block.
That's my impression. That's my, yeah, I know that. And then that's like the, for the public 
condemned it down so people can become, yeah, why? Who do you got? I must have liked that truck down there. So I've got one way to drive yeah. city county stuff more of this trigger stuff. Well, I'm just, I'm just looking at it. That's the Friday. She picks her girls up at the rink. Oh, it's not her picking them up. Yeah, and so, because when had surgery so she wasn't pregnant, the oldest one, and so um, anyway, she was going to go pick up on Friday, and the oldest one had, had a birthday today, she was having some old girls kind of night, and then they were going to the mall, um, and I said, why don't you just go ahead and go, and um, you know, you're, it's going to be busy this week, and you're going to have overtime, and so you'll just make it be out. since they went in there. Exactly. She wasn't doing her job. So what's going on with the work about Troy? Is he is Alice doing much anything as far as the is? He's still bringing me all the tables and he's doing what he can. He's doing what he can. So he's so sad. He's doing what he can. So I think that's why he wasn't kind of thinking so much because he wanted to not do it. It's just, you know, that and the fact that those guys are making more money than you. Oh, yeah, that's why. And that was the other reason I thought maybe Dick Six. He told me a long time ago so I could make more money in yeah. more time than. <laughs> which makes no like, sense. I know. See, that's, that's why I was so pissed off about that budget thing. One, besides, I thought everybody should get a basic pay increase. Yeah. Cost of living increase before people get specialty pays. Oh, you know? yeah. But you don't, but when, you do, when you do pay scales, you can't just pick one person here and one person here and adjust it. You've got to start, okay, this is our top step, and then you move it, the steps exactly. down from there. So there's a consistent level of, you know, like you start at 80% of the top salary, then you move to 85, then you move to 90. Yeah. But if you just start jacking everybody around, it gets, it's, it's yeah. totally out of whack. And, and especially with the exempt people that are, you know, oh, yeah. that because pretty soon your salary employees are making more, Yeah. I mean, your, uh, your hourly employees are making more than, you know. Well, they are. And you know, and, and that's like giving Seth, sharp, a stipend for this and a stipend for that. He hasn't written a ticket. Well, you were saying that too. I was wondering, because I saw somebody parked down here and it seemed fully picked over. That they were well, sitting there. and Thornburg that brought that stuff, thing to the chief, he screws up every time he writes a, chip, a so ticket. He yeah, and well, this light, lightest one he had, it was driving while license suspended, third. They were both uh, misdemeanors. Mm -hmm. He sent them to Thurston County. Oh, they were not there. <laughs> and they still have not fixed it. I have called them and I told them. It's I wrote them an email, and nobody's done anything. And I'm going to call the kid and tell him not I to come here that. to court because yeah, I would go to Thurston County and make sure they dismiss it because it's out of their jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. And. And when I tried to say something to Maria, and she says, well, it's only been three mistakes. He's only written three fucking tickets. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter, yeah. He's written a thousand 
that would be one thing. <laughs> but every time he writes one, he screws it up. And how can you not? And when it drives me crazy, it's the way it works. And, you know, I, I'm not doing the job, so I, you know, I can do it. But he talks about, oh, public works, you can get this sort of thing going. You can do so many, you know, you need to earn money to, to you can want more money. Yeah. Or, he never says anything about the police department. He increases their budget like 15%. Oh, I know. organizations, the fire and the police are with similar budgets, you know? Yeah. And that's, and that's a lot. Usually police and fire are both with 50% of the city's yeah. budget, both together. But what do we do? I mean, our tanker citizens pay now about 140000 to the, that's, we should be looking at 200000 250000 instead of five and a half, five and a half oh, thousand yeah. for the, you know, if we're doing what, you know, most places. Yeah. You can't spend 50% of your, all your money's on no. police services. They're just useless. I just don't. I mean, I appreciate I, I, I don't, and I always feel like I'm being an ass about it. It's like, you know, people are so oh, yeah. glad out for the police department, which is great. You know, they they do provide services yeah. that used to be there. you got to be realistic also. Oh, I know, you do. You really do. And that's what I say, too. It's like, come on, you know. they got to do their job. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Even yeah. Jones. Yeah, you know, same thing. Yeah. But he needs to be good. It's like the whole budget thing. We were when I was pitching that out. You know, Owen said we only do one special for each thing. But John, you were sitting with that. We argued about it for 20 minutes. Yeah. And then she could speak up and say, yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> but he won't, you know, he won't say anything. He is so, yeah, he's just so like that. And I think this whole thing really hit him yeah, because okay. he's just so stressed. He's exactly. just so stressed. And, Every time he gets to doing something, so he changes. Yeah. And he's just really wipes him out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the other thing. This is such a big list. That's why I wish someone could get, you know, puzzle. I don't know what to say anything because it just represents what everybody says. I, you know, it's basically just pick two people in the middle. I know sure shit that he talked to him about him being the mayor pro tem because I pissed him off about that. So I'm sure he called and said, hey, I'll put the day in, you know. Oh, I'm sure he did. Yes. Because I said, I don't care about the mayor pro tem. He knows to do whatever he wants. I just don't care about him. Yeah, I'll take that down. And <laughs> <laughs> 